hard decision because, you know, this is all I did my whole life. Was, I worked out my whole life. Um, you know, lifting, the gym has always been there. You know, and I thought, you know, this is what I would do my, you know, the rest of my life, no matter what or how old I am. Um, so to come, you know, to those crossroads to say, uh, you know, this is about it. You know, you got to make that decision whether sit down or sit down, because <laughs> it was about that time. You know, um, very hard decision. Um, one way it was a little bit easy was because of my family and. You know, anytime I'm away from my family, I have somewhat of uh, some family separate anxiety, you know, separation anxiety and all that stuff. Um, so in that way, it made it easier to where I'll be with my family a lot more, not travel as much away from them. Um, but bodybuilding has been my family uh, for all these years. Um, it's what my go-to, you know, my identity, um, everything. Um, so yeah, it was a very hard decision, but a decision that I knew that I would have to uh, make eventually, you know, one day. Because um, I always try to keep myself in reality. Um, and I'm not recreating a wheel or anything like that. I haven't done anything that anyone else hadn't done before. Um, so in that way, it's like, you know, it's nothing that you can't walk away from, you know? And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it was hard and it's still hard to deal with because, you know, you see some of the bodies and I walk around now and, you know, look at myself and I'm like, I'm not too far off and, you know, I feel good, no injuries and stuff like this. Um, so it's hard, you know, to, to watch competitions, to promote a show, see all the beginners come in and seeing, you know, the smiles and, you know, the, the fear, the shake, all that, you know, all those feelings that are involved with it, you know, I remember, you know, um, and miss it, you know, so uh, it, it, it's it's hard. I mean, that's all, it, it's like uh, divorcing, you know, from, you know, a good marriage, you know, or, you know, separating from, you know, your family, you know, moving somewhere else. Um, you know, it's, it's just hard to deal with, but something, that you have to deal with. And as long as you stay involved within the sport, uh, it, it helps and it eases things uh, a little bit. But um, I always have that competitive uh, passion inside me, um, you know, for the rest of my life, for sure. So it, it'll be hard, it'll never get easy. You know, just be able to deal with it a little bit better each day. The desire to do another show is it's never left. You know, even, you know, the Arnold Spain in 2017 was my last show. And knowing that it was my last show, there was a, <laughs> there was a desire to go back to the Arnold Columbus, you know, in 2018. Um, I was already thinking of it, you know, even though I had said I was going to retire. So, um, you, you know, the desire will always be there. Uh, the temptation will always be there. Um, well, whether I pull the trigger or not, um, I don't know, uh, you know, like I said, like they say, it doesn't take a lot of pressure, you know, <laughs> to, to pull the trigger. Um, so same with uh, competing with me. Um, it just need a few things just to, to fall just right. And I think I will be right back out there, you know, running. Um, so in saying that, you never know, stranger things has happened. I know my family backs me up. My wife would love it, I think, if I got back on stage, because I think she sees, I guess when you're that close to someone and you love someone that much, and you know they're inner and outer, um, you know you know what's, what, what, what created them or what they had created inside or what they have created for themselves in their lives um, that they want and love and you know, need and you, you know want to do. And so I think she, so being so close to me, see that, that that's still inside me, you know, that want, that passion. Um, so she will want that for me, because that would make me feel good about myself. And, and uh, you know, uh, like I said, they totally got my back on it. And uh, who knows, um, stranger things has happened. So stay tuned. 
Well, my decision to open my gym, um, this has been a long time coming. Um, I always, as a lifter, you know, I always visualize myself as having a gym one day. Um, as a competitor, of course, you, you think about, you know, you want to get up and, you know, leave your house and go to your other home, which would be a gym, you know. Um, what better place than that would, you know, would a bodybuilder have? Um, so um, I actually, you know, living one of my dreams, you know, other than, you know, becoming a professional bodybuilder, owning my own business and having my own gym. Um, like I said, it's a dream come true. I love it every second of it. It's super hard, don't get me wrong, uh, super challenging, um, but hell, uh, that's what life is all about. It's about the challenges, you know? It's not about what, what is there in front of you, it's about what you do to get around what's there in front of you, you know, and making yourself better. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it, it, because of bodybuilding and because of, um, it was my full career. I mean, bodybuilding was it. That's all I did. Um, I had to step aside uh, also to create another career for after bodybuilding because it has to end one day, guys. And you just got to be smart enough to set yourself up. Uh, to be ready for that end. So when it does end, it doesn't crush you as much. When at that end point, when you have something else to lead into, you know, that's just as uh, fulfilling, then uh, it's easier to deal with what you just put down, you know, and you can continue on with your life. It, it helps out tremendously. My dream client. Oh, wow. Well, you know, normally you would say your dream client would be, you know, this, you know, genetic freak, you know, something like a Johnny Jackson walk through the door. That's super strong, super cute. Look at that profile, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, just genetically, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but seriously, um, you would think you would want a genetic freak to walk in and you're saying this guy has tons of potential and, uh, you know, let's, let's get him going. Um, but truly, um, my dream client is the clients that I, that I have today. I have a, a big, um, it's such a different dynamic, each one of my clients. You know, I learned so much from them, uh, each and every one of them, you know, because um, they come from different walks of life. They got different problems, you know, different weaknesses. Um, so that, they help me stay educated on what I need to do to help facilitate them and other people uh, that come from, come and seek my help uh, to become better. You know, whether they want to be athletes or whether they just want to be functional, you know, and uh, maybe walking a mile again, who knows? Um, my dream client is the client that's, uh, you know, that empty himself out and ready to fill himself up with uh, the right things to do to get him to where he wants to go. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as, I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. Take your vitamin pill now. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing set. He's a marketing genius. He's got it. He's only by the right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. 
the enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster. A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That does no. No way! That stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way! I'm not gonna give you, it's gonna kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have dragged so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me. 